Right, um, hello and, uh, oh dear, it's not a good start. Right, this is um, another take on an AQA uh, AS past paper. Now, today, um, we're going to be doing the, just check. Yeah, probably should have thought of that before, but never mind. Um, we're going to be doing a June uh, 2010 AQA uh, AS uh, Physics Past Paper. Now this uh, video is going to be in separate parts. We're going to do question one, uh, question two, question three, question four, uh, etc. So it's not one big long thing, you know what you're looking for, which was a mistake in my uh, other video. Let's get cracking. So, uh, 1A part one. Uh, it asks us, oh, just 1A, doesn't matter. It says, state the principle of moments. Now, I'm not going to write this down because uh, I'm quite lazy, but the gist of it is, uh, there's a specific definition you need to know. It's the, for an object in equilibrium, uh, the, the sum of the anti-clockwise moments uh, equals the sum of the uh, clockwise moments. So I'll just put that in brief note form, but you need the equilibrium bit and the sum of the anti-clockwise equals the sum of the uh, and, no, clockwise moments. So I'll just put uh, sum of, this isn't known very well, anti-clockwise equals sum of clockwise. So that's the first bit, one part, one A. And it says, calculate the moment of the rider's weight about B. So the rider is uh, this thing there, and his weight is... 0.35 meters uh, from B. So just calculate the rider's moment and weight about B. So um, if we do as moment equals force times distance, so uh, 1B is how you should lay it out. M equals F times D. And we simply uh, put our, our distances and our weights, forces in there. Now, if that was in kilograms, uh, you'd simply times it by 9.81 to get your uh, value. So, 780 newtons times 0.35 meters. And so, that gives you a moment of... I should calculate this in my head first. 217 newton meters. Ah, it should be newton meters. No, it's not newtons per meter, it's simply newton meters. So that's the uh, first bit and done. On to 1c. So by taking moments about B, which is this point. I'm doing some different colours, it's getting crazy now guys, do it in black. So we're at B, and it says, calculate the vertical force on the road that exerts on the tyre, the vertical force that the road exerts on the tyre at A. So we need to work out the vertical force at A. Now what we do for this, is we do this on the clockwise moments, which is as B is going this way, A is going that way, uh, we do B times the distance, 1.3 metres is the difference uh, between the two points. So B times 1.3 metres, and we do all the uh, clockwise uh, moments there, equals uh, about B, so yeah. Let me just uh, make sure I've done this right. It goes 100, 1,100 newtons. Times the distance, 0.6 metres to B. Plus um, the rider's weight, which is um, 780 newtons. Times 0.35 metres. And we simplify that down. Now the reason why we've got the 780 newtons times 0.35 is that's the distance from uh, the rider's weight to B. 
uh, which is 270 newton meters. We know that, but so we've got to put the working out, and then we've got the uh, centre of mass of the bike, or whatever that's meant to be, and that's equal to the moment of B. So B equals uh, 1,100 newtons. I'm not going to do any calculations, just so you can see where I'm getting the values from. Uh, plus 780 newtons times 0.35. And that's all over um, 1.3 meters. Now if you don't get why we've done that, uh, you can look at the moments video, which highlights a June 2014 exam question, and uh, we go through it as to when. You know, it's a good idea. So, let me make sure what B comes to. See what B comes to. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Just uh, get calculated and make sure I've done it right. Normally this doesn't happen, but I'm not brilliant with moment ones. Second, 100 times 0.6 plus uh, 270 worked out over 1.3. Yeah, that's correct. And that gets you uh, 720 newtons. Hopefully that's, uh, you've understood how we've got that. Let's see if that's the end of the question. Calculate the, uh, now it says, calculate the vertical force, so going blue this time, it's crazy guys. Calculate the vertical force that the road exerts at tyre at B. So we want to find the blue one now. So for 1D. Now we know the force, there's only two vertical forces, the force at the front tyre, the force at the, the rear tyre. Now, we know the force of the front tyre is 720, uh, sorry, rear tyre is 720 newtons. So, put that down, B equals 720 newtons. So, A must equal uh, the forces anti-clockwise, um, sorry, yeah, anti-clockwise plus, yeah. So, right, so we know B. Now, all the ones that are going this way, pushing it uh, round, so anti-clockwise even, and um, make sure I'm doing this right. Sorry, let me just um, one thousand one hundred plus seven eighty seven twenty. Take the answer. 60. Yeah, so um, what we do is we add these two uh, clockwise, anti clockwise moments, so 1100 newtons plus 780 newtons, take 720 newtons, gets us A, and A is equal to 1. Specified in there, that's 1200 newtons if you round it up. That's because these two are going anti clockwise, B is going clockwise, uh, so A must equal uh, some of them if you like. Hopefully, that's helped you understand it. If you haven't quite got it, uh, you can look at the mark scheme, but I know I've done it a bit confusing you, but hopefully, you haven't. I'm trying to explain it in the briefest way. 1E, see what 1E says, it says the maximum power, I'm going right again this time, crazy, so uh, 1E, now 1E says um, the maximum power of the motorcycle is 7.5 kilowatts, so just put what you know down, even if you've not read the question, it's 7500 watts, 
and the maximum speed of 26 meters per second so V equals 26 meters per second it says calculate the total horizontal forces for the speed now if it's got a maximum speed of 26 meters per second going uh, forwards if it's in equilibrium as we said uh, the force is forwards it equals the force is backwards well we didn't quite say it was only five moments but still uh, the forces are balanced on the object, which is uh, Newton's first law. Which is all forces uh, will be balanced if the object is to remain at uh, equilibrium. It's not quite words like that, but it's just a bit. So, if we know um, our formula for power, which is, uh, I just write in note form, P equals FV. Given on your formula sheet, it's power equals force times velocity. So we know that the force is forwards equals the force is backwards. So it doesn't matter what force uh, we put in there, they're going to be the same. So the power is equal to 7, if we substitute in our values, 7,500 watts even, equals F times 26 meters per second. And if we divide 7,500 by 26, we get our force. Therefore, force equals. <coughs> sorry, just give me a second. Is 290 newtons. And this is because the force forwards, well, first rounded, it was actually 288.8 newtons. I just rounded it to 290, uh, which it says in the marks. I'm just trying to keep as accurate as I can. So. If the force forwards equals the force backwards, it doesn't matter what force it, you put. If you can put forward force and backward force, they're going to be the same. But it's asking for the backward force, uh, so they're not going to know we've, we've thought of it as being the forward force. If that helps you, if it doesn't, forget that, but I uh, waffle a bit. So you've got your power, your velocity, you subtune them in, uh, divide, it, divide power by velocity to get force, to your force backwards equals your force forwards, that's 290 newtons. Rounded up from 288.8 newtons. Right. If I'm not mistaken, that's uh, the end of question one. Uh, thanks for watching this tutorial. We'll see you in the next one.